Hey, Rich Gonzalez, Prep Cal Track, along with Jason Eichelberger, recapping day one what happened at the 2023 CIF State Track and Field Championships. One thing that I learned is never think you know what's going to happen at these things because for the first time, nothing seemed to go as we're used to. Don't get me wrong, the favorites got through, no big casualties. But the whole day was almost anticlimactic. It was weird. It was very strange in that effect. But a couple of key things. First off, Roderick Pleasant. We thought he was going to be having some problems because of injury from last weekend. He looked great. He felt great. Even from the night before, he actually did an Instagram Live. He seemed relaxed, normal, and he showed no ill effects whatsoever during the meet. There was a little bit of an incident, not necessarily involving him, but someone from his camp toward the end of the meet, which had me concerned that this might turn into a problem, him maybe getting disqualified or just some sort of an issue. Fortunately, that wasn't the case. Uh, one thing that caused some attention as a stir during the meet was the boys' 110 high hurdles featuring Anthony Flowers of South Torrance. Uh, he actually was uh, accused of false starting, and then the crowd got into it, bit of, uh, and we'll talk about it in a couple of minutes with Jason, but bit of voc vociferous objection from the crowd and there was a lot of clapping going on for the launching competition. That's what was used by the athlete to basically claim this, this threw me off a little bit. And the starters concurred and let him back in. It's kind of interesting background. Ross Flowers, I found out, his dad actually has quite a bit of background in the sport, uh, his success also in hurdling, and is also a sports psychologist. Uh, a really renowned one, I guess works with the Rams, works with the Lakers. So I think, I have a feeling his son probably with this whole thing going on was already trained as to how to handle that moment, <laughs> handle the stress and keep your poise. So that's kind of interesting. The one surprise that caught me completely off guard, Adrian Parker, the sprinter out of Helix of San Diego section. Last weekend, he set a section record at 400. He was complete no-show here. We found out today the issue was during warm-up for the 4x100 yesterday at the prelims, he felt a bit of a twinge and the power just wasn't there, lower body. Uh, had it checked out, eventually... They decided, you know what, he's, he's not a go here. Adrian, to his credit, wanted to still run the relay with his teammates because that was the only event they had. So they gave it a try, didn't qualify, you know, still ran pretty well. But after the 4x1, he gave it a try and warm us again for the 400. It did not feel good. That's why he was a no-show, very unfortunately. A uh, couple other things. One other controversy for the meet was a situation which a lot of you are aware of regarding some transgender athletes that were competing uh, in the meet in the distance races. They were set to they were scheduled to go ahead and show up and compete. Neither one showed. From a very good source, here's what we're told actually happened. And we were aware of this early on, even before the no-shows. It was our understanding that there was actually some protest at the homes of each of these two athletes where people showed up. And that was something that was obviously very unwelcomed, uh, made the family basically, uh, you know, feel unwelcomed. It didn't go over well. They made the decision not to show up. So unfortunately, wherever you stand on that issue, a very unfortunate situation when you go to the house of somebody and do that, because we are still talking about minors as well. So it's a regrettable situation. And I know off camera, I spoke with individuals and they just do not like, obviously some like the situation, but they don't like how the adults are handling situation from all regards. So we'll see where that goes down in the future. Team situation, team scoring, Granada Hills, they're, they're still the favorite of the boys' side. They would need to have something to go wrong because no one else can match them right now for the team championship. The girls, there's been some shifting. We had five or six teams within two points coming into the weekend. We're now eight teams, but within five points. And Long Beach Wilson, the team at the bottom of that group of five or six on Friday going into the meet, all their good kids, all their role players got in. Right now, they're the favorite to win, but there's still a lot of teams in the hunt. So this is going to be a great team competition down the stretch. Bit of a downer for some of you this year. Unfortunately, there will be no fireworks show at the end of the meet. Last year, there was no show, and that was partly because of strong winds. Bit of a fire concern that something might be blown to areas where it would be of a risk. It's a bit different this year. My understanding is there was a new fire marshal. It took quite a while to go ahead and clear the area because they set the fireworks up in the warm-up field. Because of the amount it of time it now takes now to clear the area, that would not work well with the meet schedule. 
Uh, it, it basically will drag too late. Therefore, regrettably, there is no fireworks show this year and may not be for the foreseeable future as well. Uh, last thing as far as, well, you know what, we'll stop for right, for right now. Uh, Jason, as you kind of mentioned a little bit uh, what was going on in your discussion with one of our, <laughs> our meet officials too. Yeah, you know, it, obviously those are really difficult situations. You're talking about the possibility of a, an athlete not being able to compete at that level, at the state level, which is what all these athletes are shooting for. Uh, from my vantage point, um, obviously the crowd kind of rose to a crescendo and uh, there was a meet official there that, that you know, had an opinion that, you know, it might have been a false starter. Something might have been out of the ordinary. Um, as the crowd kind of got louder, um, you could kind of see the look as though it were to say, well, you know, I think we're, we're going to maybe listen to the crowd. And obviously that crowd, it, it worked. It, it, you know, the athlete was not disqualified. But it is a situation that's interesting to kind of see you know, these are kids, and when you get to this level, obviously they want to see them run, but obviously there are rules and they do have to be followed. So a little bit of a uh, interplay there between, you know, following the rules, acquiescing to the crowd, and, you know, fortunately we, we had a resolution and now we're moving forward. A little bit of background there. You mentioned meet official. The person actually was Hal Harkness. For those of you who've been involved in the sport, Hal used to be an L.A. City Section Commissioner. He's been involved in the sport for decades, and CF leans on him. So Hal's expertise, my understanding from you, is when that happened, he said, oh, that's a false start. But then once the crowd got into it, Hal's been around long enough to know, well, this might not be clear cut and dry after all. And of course it wasn't. So that was kind of interesting. And that's Hal's experience shining through and the fact that, you know, Humanity is involved, and sometimes, sometimes things change. And experience, right there, he saw that coming. There was a sly smile on his face. I will say, <laughs> I will say that. Uh, but again, you get to this point. Crowd definitely wants to see these athletes compete. We want to see these athletes compete, but you got to follow rules too. We saw what, what ended up happening, and you know, credit to him, he's moving on. Now, I was at the finish line, going ahead and recording some clips of athletes as they were finishing on the track. You had a chance to talk with several athletes. It, is there any general theme or, or was there anything that one of them said in particular that kind of caught your attention more than the others? Um, in terms of the overall meet yesterday, I think there's a, there was a feeling of, you know, we just want to get through to tomorrow. I think, you know, when you get to qualifying, it's an opportunity to kind of hone things and, and fine tune things for the final time. Obviously, you get to a state final and it's, there's no holding back. There's letting go and, and doing what you need to do. So I think yesterday, for me, the theme was let's get through. Let's survive. We don't want to, you know, as a couple athletes told me, blow our tanks there uh, in qualifying and make sure that we set ourselves up for a, a good final for tomorrow. One thing to keep an eye on, the boys' 100-meter dash. Uh, you know, we always want to see some history. Uh, talking uh, this morning with our videographer, photographer Dylan Stewart, he was in communication with, with uh, Roderick Pleasant, the sprinter, the outstanding sprinter from Sarah, asking about the meet record for the 100, which is 1030, Rodney Washington and Casimir Allen. And apparently when Roderick heard about what the time is, just confirmation of what the meet record is, apparently, you know, Roderick said that, you know, I'm getting that record today. <laughs> so it's good that he's focused on that. Uh, we should have good conditions. Last yesterday was amazing. It was low 80s. Regrettably, I mean, last year we had a lot of wind. This year, yesterday, we had less wind than usual. And that took away some of the great sprint times we're kind of used to right here. Uh, this year, or today, so it's to be a 7 degrees warmer, a high of 80, 89. And that should play into a bit better sprint times, even though we're starting a little bit later. So I think the conditions will be really good. And Roderick, we see him healthy. So I've got a feeling that 1030, I mean, he's gone 1009 windy, 1014 legal twice. I wouldn't be surprised if we have a few people take down or beat that meet record. The big question is, and we've seen this before, what is the win reading going to say? Because I'm confident they'll beat the time. But will it be when legal? <laughs> you mentioned Roderick, and obviously big focus, and rightfully so. Um, yesterday, he seemed to be in really, really good spirits. Um, you can see sort of the, you know, this is obviously his last CIF meet, and he wants to, to go out and, and, and defend his state championships, and obviously he, he's got a good chance to do so. You would almost expect maybe, uh, is he tense? Is he, you know, feeling pressure or anything? He, he really looked relaxed, and I'd like to see that. After last week, and, you know, maybe, oh, is he feeling okay, this and that. Definitely sounded like he's ready to go, so definitely look forward to seeing that. And like you said, the wind readings will play a big part in things. 
We'll see what they, they record, but it was great conditions yesterday. So there was some talk about the fact of, hey, the sprinters were really fast regardless yesterday. Is that the fastest we've ever had the state prelims? The answer is no. The last athlete in yesterday was 10.60. The record for the fastest last qualifier is 10.54. That was a few years ago. The, f the fastest athlete ever not to make it was 10.57, and that was DeAnthony Thomas, who went on to a nice career after high school, after track and field, uh, I believe in the NFL, mm -hmm. which can pay some bills pretty much. A <laughs> um, couple things real quick also, the, uh, some victims in the, in the field events. There were two kind of big names, or big storylines that didn't play through. Our defending champion, Hannah Slover, in the girls' high gym competition. Uh, this year, she cleared 5.5. Now, last year, I believe she won state at 5.6 or 5.7, which may not seem like a mark that usually wins state. you got to remember, last year was very windy. That was a good mark last year, given the wind. This year, she was 15th overall, didn't advance. Also, an unlucky number 15 in the girls' pole vault, which was the deepest event on the girls' side. Aspen Fears fell up short, did not advance also. So that was kind of unfortunate there. Um, any other thoughts at this point in time? You know, obviously when you get to this meet, um, this is what you, 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 you know, these athletes train all year to kind of get here. And so definitely looking forward to some really good battles here. I, I'll pick up on the boys 400. Uh, Dijon Stanley, uh, been fantastic all year, obviously, uh, for Granada Hills Charter. And Zy Ricks, Long Beach Poly. Um, He's, he's just been in such a groove, and we've talked about it before, just the way and the calmness and his form and everything else. They were separated. Uh, let's see, Dijon was 46-66 yesterday in qualifying. Zyrix was 46-68. Definitely could see a really good battle there and really would like to see you know that, that battle kind of come out there on the track. Um, I also look forward to uh, the girls 800. We talked about it in our video the other day. Um, yesterday, you know, we talked about no casualties, but there was almost a really, really big one there with uh, Mackenzie Brown of JW North. Uh, she was the final qualifier to get into the 800, the defending state champion. And there were some nervous moments there. I was standing there kind of watching her. She was watching some of the other runners come through. It was kind of questionable whether she would advance. She did end up advancing. Um, you could either take that two ways. She had an off day and she'll come back strong. Will that play with her mentally? I'm going to say that I think she's going to come back and run well. And obviously that'll be a, a spotlight race to look forward to. You know, I hope that's the case, but I have to admit, I'm a little concerned. I spoke with her. I asked her after her race before the four by four, I asked her in two different ways. Was that a case of you holding back a little bit too much and it almost cost you or was there something more there? And in two different ways, she wasn't too revealing, but she kind of mentioned it just wasn't a good day for her. And it made me a bit nervous, like, uh-oh, so is she going to be 100% for the final or not? And one thing, Sadie Engelhart, she has the best time in the field by eight seconds. She's the National Federation record holder in the event. On one hand, she can hold back a bit to save for the eight. And on the other hand, I've seen this many times before, when you have someone that good in an event... The other kids give that person way too much respect, respect and they don't challenge them. And in the case of Mackenzie Brown, she needs those girls in the 1600 to challenge Sadie Engelhart <laughs> to get her tired before the 800. So we'll see if that shakes out. You mentioned about Zy Ricks. We, everybody knows about how good Roderick Pleasant is, all credit to him. Everyone is aware of Dijon Stanley, another great talent. Uh, I still look at Jordan Washington, <laughs> and I still look at Zaya Ricks, yes. and those two individuals have the ability to either surpass or join at that level, those two. And to have those four athletes put on a great show, hopefully today, would a, be a nice, nice cherry on top <laughs> to the 103rd, 103rd California State meet. I agree. Uh, again, there's there's so many athletes that we you know we talk about and we mention them, um, and then there's the ones that are right below. And I'm not saying that those those athletes are below Jordan Washington, Zy Ricks, great athletes. They've been fantastic. But if you're looking for people to push the Roderick Pleasants and the Dijon Standies, the Stanleys, excuse me, those are the two to kind of keep an eye on. And I think we're going to see some battles there that maybe you and I will be talking about down the line. Before wrapping up, a couple of things. Megan Humphreys in the field events. She's a girl that, again, she's in four events. She could potentially win three of the four. 
Although I'm not giving her much of a chance to win the 200, she's shown me a lot more speed in recent weeks than mm -hmm. I thought she was capable of, so just even more ability. The field events, I'm a little bit concerned. The high jump, that can be a bit of a, of a wild card in a sense. The long and the triple, she has competition, but she is so good. So the question is, where is she going to fall? Is she going to end up somewhere scoring individually in the high 20s? I think to save her better, she's probably going to be somewhere in the low 30s. And will that be enough for the state title? Long Beach Wilson had a very good day one. And I think right now they measure up in the mid 30s. They're the favorite. Uh, the big question for me is Notre Dame with their two good throwers. How well will they execute in both throwing events? Uh, right now they've been, they've been showing great in the shot put. The challenge is the discus throw. Not quite as consistent there. And there are some good girls coming on. Now, Leah Fields of Carruthers coming on. And then also now uh, Galadriel Melian of Weston Ranch. Those two are now throwing really well. Uh, so the pressure is going to be on those two girls. Uh, it's in, you know, on, on two throwers, that's always going to be tough. So we'll see how they respond to that. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that. Um, I had a chance to talk to both of them yesterday. Uh, they both definitely seem to be looking forward to, to today's competition, in large part for that reason. Um, confident in the shot put, but wanting to go out and do something well in the discus. And I think that they are aware of the possibilities of not only individually having a strong meet, but the team aspect as well. I mean, again, it's, it's a... a, a not a usual thing to have two athletes that just you know could compete for a team title like that um, doing two events like that so it'll be interesting to see how they go ahead and kind of balance that obviously they both have individual goals so they'll be competing against each other uh, in that regard but the teams the team title as well very important and obviously you want to bring that home for your school last thing in wrapping up one thing that I noticed yesterday I noticed it kind of part way through but much more so down the stretch the mood in the stadium seemed flatter than usual, I thought. It just didn't have the vibe that you usually see at something like the California State Championship. And I can't pinpoint the reason why, but it was not electric out there. I'm hoping for the, and usually, even for the prelims, we sense that. So it's none of those all well with finals. Hey, in prelims with the talent and how hard it is to advance, we usually see that. We weren't seeing that. So I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, but this, hopefully today, with the big guns out there and with more at stake, now it's the state titles. It is the records. It's a team championship. I'm hoping that elevates the mood. We need that. We actually do need that because there's too much talent out there, all-time talent, to let it go to waste. And I would say the same. Um, I think today you're going to see, and I'm hopeful that we do see, a more exuberant crowd. Uh, knowing some of the historical significance of the athletes that you will see out there today and their opportunity to cement legacies and cement spots uh, on the California all-time record list, which obviously is going to add an element that wasn't there necessarily yesterday in terms of getting ready for today. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piggyback off of what you said and hope that today we do get that energy and we get that surge of excitement that we've come to know covering these meets all these years that we have. I'm going to put you on the spot real quick. You haven't seen as much of the action, I think, uh, as some of the kids as much this year maybe as I have. From this year, from what you've seen, who's the best athlete you've seen out there? Boy or girl? Boy. <laughs> I will say I have been really thoroughly impressed with uh, somebody who we talked about before. Um, I'm going to go with Zy Ricks. Yeah. I really like athletes who have an appearance that the moment is not too big. And they're confident. Every time I've seen him run, I don't get a sense that he is scared or afraid of competition. Uh, I feel as though Zai is just, I don't want to say biding his time, but he looks calm. And I like the demeanor and I like the way that he kind of puts that out there. He's in an event, you know, he's in several events, but the 400 in particular, I like to see in that particular race because obviously it's, you know, distance and then sprint. I like to see an athlete that comes out there and doesn't look as though he spent coming around, uh, maybe with 200 or 100 to go. He always, his form is always calm. There's not a lot of wasted motion. I look at things like that and I say to myself, when he gets in a pressure situation, I don't think he's going to, to fold and the moment's going to be too big. I like the battle with him and, and Stan Lee today. Um, I think it's going to be a really good one and it wouldn't surprise me if he ended up uh, winning that particular race. I think overall the most talented athlete in this meet, sheerly talent, is Zyrix. I'll stand by what I said earlier this year. 
I don't think we're gonna see what he can do quite this year, because I think he's still learning what is his better event. Is it the four? Is it the eight? Is it something else? So that being said, even though he's a phenomenal athlete, I think the one that I've enjoyed watching the most this year is Roderick Pleasant. And the reason being, when you're in the 100, you have attention on you. <laughs> Eyeballs, all that stuff. And he's handled it really well. He wasn't running as fast as he wanted to early in the season. He was running fast, but in the 100, you always want to run super fast, which only builds the pressure. And he handled that really, really, really well. So that's pretty good to see. I'll piggyback off of that too. Uh, Roderick's been really, really impressive. When you consider that every time he steps out onto the blocks and he's getting ready to start, there's a hush over a crowd. There's this anticipation that we're going to see something immense. Uh, we do have to kind of keep into consideration that, you know, he's, he's a high school athlete. And to have all the weight of that expectation, for some, it, it can be really difficult to go out there and, and produce quality. And he has produced quality. And every time the moment has been big, he's, he's gone out there. He's done a fantastic job. So I will piggyback off that. Plus, his personality is a fantastic young man and uh, very, very, uh, how can I put this, very expressive on his beliefs there in a very positive and in in entertaining way. So... Usually spinners are very brash, very arrogant. He's confident, <laughs> yeah. but not beyond. He's, he's not doesn't go beyond. He does, he's never. I've never seen the the arrogant nature of him. Right, exactly. I've never seen that bad seed. <laughs> it's always confident, quietly, and respectfully, which is pretty cool to see. All right, the big show later on today. Make sure you definitely tune in. We'll be doing stuff on Instagram, also on Twitter. Uh, but if you're in the stands, we'll also be like sending some stuff out. But enjoy the meet. It should be a good one. Great conditions and some phenomenal individual athletes out there.